Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Before I jump right into it, I just want to say thank you for the incredible response to my video last month all about focus stacking using the automatic approach. That video already has 110,000 views, which is just absolutely tremendous, so thank you so much for that. And in the comment section of that video, there was quite a few mentions of how to manually focus stack in the event that Photoshop really struggles to determine what portions of an image to use and what portions of an image not to use. And this happens occasionally in landscape photography, especially when you have things moving throughout your scene, whether it's clouds in the sky, or maybe it's branches in a tree, or maybe it's water flowing throughout your photograph. And that's the purpose of this week's video, is to discuss how to manually focus stack your landscape photos. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this, but this is definitely the, the technique that I use most often whenever I run into the occasional situation where Photoshop requires a, a little bit of extra assistance. Now, if you don't have a focus stack set of images to practice this technique on, you can easily create one at home by simply grabbing two random objects, placing them on a table, and kind of staggering them a little bit to where one object represents a foreground element and the other object represents a background element. And then grab your tripod and set up your camera and position your camera to where it's close to the object in the foreground. And I would suggest using an aperture of around maybe F8 and then take your focus point and shift it over to the area of the, uh, the foreground or the first object. And then focus your camera and take the shot. And then without moving anything, shift your focus point over to the area in the background or the background object. And then refocus your camera and take that shot. And then you can use these two images to create or for your focus stack series, just so that way you can practice this technique at home. Now, for purposes of this week's video, we're going to use this image right here, as I think it's a, a great representation of a three image focus stack series that has water flowing throughout the entire scene. So this is the first image, second image, the third image, and this is the final image, the final edited version. So all three of these images was shot at F11, ISO 100 at 1.3 seconds, zoomed in at 25 millimeters. Now I think this image right here, yes, this is the image that is uh, focused for the foreground. This next image here is the area that is, or the image that is focused on the midground. And the next image is the one that is focused on the background. And as you can notice, the background is perfectly in focus in this scenario, and the foreground is completely soft. And if we come all the way back to the very first image that is focused on the foreground that looks so nice, we'll notice that the background is completely out of focus in this scenario. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna run through just a real quick edit to apply to this photograph, and then we'll sync them across all three images. So the first thing I always do is come up to lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections. I'm gonna come up to the basic panel. I wanna warm this up uh, just a touch. Well, that looks good. Let's add a little bit of magenta. I think there looks good. And exposure. I think the, ex I kind of like the exposure for this one. I want it to be a little bit darker. Maybe just a slight bump right there. Let's add a little bit of global contrast. Definitely want to bring the highlights down a little bit. Maybe about there. Bring the shadows up some. Uh, not too much. Maybe right around. That looks good. And then the whites. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do, just bring the whites up just a little bit, not much. And then the blacks, I uh, wanna bring that down a little bit as well. Add a little bit of texture, and then add a little bit of negative clarity, and then a slight bump in vibrance as well. I'm gonna come down to the tone curve, and then in the essence of time, I'm just gonna come down here and select the medium contrast, just to add a slight contrast adjustment to the overall photograph. And then I want to sharpen the image. So I'm gonna bring the sharpening up to around the mid 50s. Turn this detail up to around 75. I'm gonna hold down the option key. And just drag this over to the right, masking everything out, or masking the water out. So anything that is white is gonna receive the sharpening. And anything that is black is not going to receive the sharpening. I really don't wanna sharpen a lot of the water. So I think that looks good. And then the final thing that I usually will do is come down here and add a slight vignette to the overall photograph. So this is where we started. This is the before image, and this is after, before, and after. I think I'm gonna come back and add just a little bit more of an exposure bump. 
I think that looks good right there. Let's toggle this on and off one more time. This is before and after. So once we have the initial edit done on the very first image, we're gonna go ahead and sync that edit across all three of these photographs. So I'm gonna come up to library. I'm gonna hit the grid. This is the image we just edited. I'm gonna hold on the shift key to select all three of these photos. And I'm gonna right click and I am going to hit develop settings and sync settings. And then these are all the different options in Lightroom, the different settings, and I just wanna leave them all checked because I want to apply them all from that image that I just edited. So I hit synchronize, and you'll now notice that all three of these images look identical. So now I wanna bring them all into Photoshop, so I'm going to right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And this process usually will take anywhere from maybe 30 seconds to maybe a minute or so. It depends on how many images you are uh, uploading or moving over in the Photoshop. It depends on how large those files are and of course the speed of your computer. But in, in essence, to appreciate everybody's time, I went ahead and already opened this inside of Photoshop. And here is the image right here. So here are the three images or the three layers on the right side of your screen. First thing I wanna do, is I want to determine where each one of these layers are focused. So I'm gonna turn these bottom two off to where we're only looking at this one right here. And I'm just gonna zoom in. And I just wanna just look and see exactly which, which image this is. And this is clearly the image that is focused on the foreground. So I'm gonna just type in here, foreground, just to keep it a little bit more organized. So that's foreground. Turn this off, look at this image right here. This one should be the, the midground. And it is, so I'm gonna double click right here, just erase that and type in midground. And then this last image right here, of course, is going to be the background layer, background. And then let's turn all of these back on. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna kinda of shuffle these layers around a little bit because I want my background layer to be on top. And then I want the second layer beneath that to be my midground layer. And then I want my foreground layer to be at the very bottom. So I'm gonna come over here and just grab background, drag it to the top. And then I'm gonna drag midground all the way up to the middle right here. So now we have background, midground, and foreground. Now the next thing I wanna do is I want to align these layers a little bit because there's always a little bit of shift. Maybe you bumped your tripod when you're taking the images or maybe there was some focus breathing whenever you were moving your focus point throughout the scene. But Photoshop does a really good job of automatically aligning these layers together. And this step right here is exactly the same as the step if you were to use the automatic focus stacking method. So I'm gonna come over here, select foreground, and then select background. And I'm gonna come up here to uh, edit, auto align. And I always just do auto right here and hit OK. And this process is usually pretty quick, it doesn't take uh, too terribly long, just a few seconds usually. And it's aligning everything right now from the background of the midground to the foreground layer. There we go. And you'll, also, and you'll see these once the alignment process is complete, these kind of weird anomalies on the, uh, the edges of your photograph. I usually crop almost all of my photos, so that's how I usually remove those. There's a couple different ways to do it, but I will just usually crop the sides in a little bit, crop the top in, and then of course crop in the bottom as well. And then once I am done with that, just hit the check mark at the top and then just zoom into the corners, or I'm sorry, the edges, and just make sure everything looks good. Make sure everything looks clean, you resolve those areas. Now, the next thing we wanna do <clears throat> is we want to go into each individual layer and determine what portion of that layer we want to use and what portions of that layer we do not wanna use. So we're gonna start with the background. So I'm gonna select background and I'm gonna come down here to this little button right here, and we're going to add a layer mask. So I'm gonna select that. You'll notice that it added a white layer mask to the background layer. Now this is really important. I know I mentioned this before, but white reveals and black conceals. So white reveals, black conceals. And what I wanna do is select that layer mask, and I'm gonna come over here to the paintbrush. I'm gonna select paintbrush, and I'm gonna come up to the top. And this is the slider that determines the, the edge of that brush. So if you look right here, if I slide this all the way to 100% hardness, you'll notice that it's a very defined edge. If I slide it all the way to 0% hardness, you'll notice it's very soft. I usually like to leave it somewhere right around 50. And then I leave my opacity at 100% and my flow at 100%. And then I'm going to come down here and hit this little arrow right here and it's gonna flip black, flip white to black, basically putting black as the color of my paintbrush. And I'm gonna increase the size of my paintbrush 
and I'm gonna just start painting on the areas of the image that I do not want for the background layer. So I obviously wanna keep the background, but I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paint out this area right through here. And you'll notice that the layer now has a lot of black on it and that everything in white is the areas of the background layer that we're gonna keep. So everything right through here, we do not want. We only want the background. I'm gonna come down to the mid-ground layer and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna come down to add a layer mask. It's got the white layer mask right there. I'm gonna click on it and we still have black highlighted right there. So that's the color of the brush we're using. And since this is the mid-ground layer, I'm gonna paint black across the background and I'm gonna paint black across the foreground because we do not want those portions of this particular image. We only want the mid-ground. So I'm gonna take black and just paint all right through here. And you'll notice the area where our layer mask is. And another really cool way to see this is by hitting the backslash key. It just highlights everything that you painted in red, just to make it just a little bit easier to see. And then I'm gonna paint this area out right through here in the foreground, basically only revealing the area in the midground that we want. And to turn that red um, kind of highlight off, just hit backslash again. Then I'm gonna come up here. And now if we zoom all the way in, you'll notice that the foreground is completely sharp. Your midground is completely sharp and the background is now completely sharp. And that's really it. But what happens a lot of times is you'll see areas like this. It's still completely out of focus. So what do you do? So that area right there is really part of the background layer. So I'm gonna come back up to paintbrush and I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did earlier. I'm going to decrease the size of this brush because it is substantially too big right now. And I'm going to flip this around to, I'm sorry, to white which is the opposite. So white reveals, and we're gonna remove some of this black area that we painted. We basically painted in areas we should not have painted. I'm gonna increase the size of this brush, and this part right here I think is just really, really cool. I'm gonna make sure that I'm clicking on that layer mask, and we're gonna to start to paint. Oh, whoops, Command Z. Gotta make sure I have white highlighted there. And when we paint, you'll notice that that area in focus is now, or the area that I'm painting on is now coming into focus because we're removing some of that black area where we remove this portion. This is the area that we wanna keep in our background layer. So I'm gonna paint all through here. I find this area, or this process right here to be very therapeutic for some reason. And then all right through here, we definitely wanna use all of that. We wanna use this portion as well. I think it's really cool when you, when you zoom in a lot and you kind of just watch it all come to life like that when you're painting through it. I think that just looks really neat. And you can spend a ton of time doing this. You know, you definitely want to make sure your, your water flow looks good. So we're going to paint through here like this. Zoom out a little bit now. Increase the size of that brush just a touch. Kind of make sure it all looks natural like that. And like I mentioned, you can spend a ton of time doing this. I'm just doing this really quickly. But you'll definitely want to kind of look through the overall photograph, make sure that there isn't any area of your scene that you, uh, did, that you didn't mean to mask out or accidentally. And everything, uh, make sure that it all looks clear to you and perfectly in focus. But that's the overall process. And then once you have all of the, uh, the layer masks completed, there's a couple different things you can do. You can come over here and you can highlight all three and you can right click it and hit flatten image and that'll just create one final layer right there. Or you could actually hit command G and group all the layers together in a folder like that. Or you could actually, let me undo that, you could hit, uh, what is it, it's shift command option E which creates a verge mis ver <laughs> merge visible stamp layer and that you can start doing your final edits from that point on. So there's multiple different things you can do from that point, but that is the overall process that I'll go through whenever I uh, try to, uh, or, or whenever I need to attempt a um, manual focus stacking process. So before I do wrap up this week's video, I do wanna say just a big thanks to Squarespace again, who is the sponsor of this week's video and who I use for all of my website needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform from which to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and custom 
customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery. That way you can make it your own. There's also an online booking and scheduling tool for your photo sessions that you can add to your Squarespace website so that clients can easily see your availability and reschedule if they need to, which ultimately takes the hassle out of coordinating calendars. You can even grow and engage your customers with Squarespace email campaign tools, which enables you to create powerful emails that match your website with your products, blog posts, and logo, just so that your messaging remains consistent. So if you are looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do appreciate you watching this week's video. If you have any questions at all regarding auto focus stacking or manual focus stacking, please leave those in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up, definitely helps me out and the, the video perform better, helps the channel perform better as well. And then subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And as always, I appreciate you checking out the video and I will see you all next week. Bye.